Welcome to the Math 1, Unit 7, Lesson 6, Summary Video, Homegrown Music Fest. This lesson is a solidify understanding task, which takes concepts developed previously and helps you formalize those ideas. The purpose of this lesson is to expand your thinking with patterns containing a common second difference in order to make sense of a quadratic function in context and to observe how the key features of a linear function relates to those of a quadratic function. The State Fair puts on a ton of concerts over the 10 days it's open. The concert promoter has hired you to help decide how much to charge for some of, its, some of the tickets. If tickets for Maurice and the O's were $6, the fair would have an income of $12,000, but they could actually make more money. If they raised their ticket prices by $1, their income would be $13,300. If they raise their ticket prices by $2, their income would be $14,400. So in this task, we're not going to be considering expenses. We're only looking at income. So we are being asked to represent this in, with multiple representations, just as we did with linear and exponential functions earlier in the school year. And one of the things to consider with this task is, is there a, a price that would be too much for a concert goer to pay for a ticket? And is there a maximum income that the company would receive from this concert? And so in this table, you can see that we have the original ticket price of $6. This represents no change in my ticket price and an income of $12,000. They told us in the problem in the story that if we raise the ticket price by $1 to $7, we then have this income. If we raise it by $2 to $8 per ticket, then we have this um, income of $14,400. And so when we look at the difference in those values, we see that we have a difference of $1,300 here and a difference of $1,100 here. And so we know that this is not linear because it doesn't have a common difference from one term to the next. And we can also tell that it's not exponential. So we're going to look at the second difference. This is the first difference. This is the difference between the the y or the function of of when x is 0 and this y or the function when x is 1 and then the difference here so when we look at that second difference what's happening from 1300 to 1100 1, we can see that it's decreasing by $200 and so the problem said if this pattern continues what would this look like And so I've gone ahead and filled in the rest of the table. So if we continue the pattern of decreasing these differences by $200 a piece, then we're going to go from 1300 to 1100, 900, 700, 500, 300, 100, negative 100, negative 300, negative 500. And so if we know that the difference between these two values is 1,300, we're increasing, this is positive, we're adding 1,300 to this previous outcome to get the new one, then we're adding 1,100 to this one to get this, this income value. Now we're going to add 900 to get the next one, we'll add 700 to get the next one, 500, and so on. Then it will look like this. And so what we can see is our income is continuing to increase even though it's increasing the amount by which it's increasing is actually decreasing. So when the ticket price is six dollars and it goes to seven dollars I'm going from earning $12,000 to $13,300, which is an increase in my income, 
it's an increase by $1,300. But when I go from $7 per ticket to $8 per ticket, now I'm going from $13,300 income to $14,400 income, which is only an increase here of $1,100. So the increase in income from this ticket price to this ticket price is actually $200 less than the increase in income from this ticket price at $6 to this ticket price at $7, which was $1,300. And you can see that I continue to make less and less money, even though it's positive, I continue to make less and less money, um, less by $200, each time I increase the ticket price by $1, all the way until I get up to this number right here. So we can see that there's a shift in my table here at $13 a ticket, or after I've increased my ticket price by $7, I hit this value, this peak, this maximum income of $16,900. Then when I increase it another dollar to $14 a ticket, now I'm starting to go backwards. So now I'm, not, I'm no longer making more money, now I'm actually losing, I'm losing $100, I'm making $100 less. And then if I increase from $14 a ticket to $15 a ticket, now I'm making $300 less. So while I still have income, I still have $16,500 worth of income, now it's decreasing. My income is decreasing. So my income is increasing all the way up to the maximum, and then my income starts to decrease. We know that if we look at the total income, and we divide that by how many, how much we're charging per ticket. So if I have a total income of $12,000 and I'm charging $6 a ticket, if I divide 12,000 by six, that's gonna tell me how many, attend, how many people attended the concert at that price. If I take $16,000 and I divide it by 10, that's gonna tell me how many people attended the concert at $10 per ticket. And if we look at this graphically, we already stated that our x axis is going to be represented by the $1 increase in our ticket price or the $1 change in our ticket price. And the y values are going to be represented by the total income. And so at <clears throat> 0, 12,000, we have our y intercept here. So we're saying that at no change at zero change in the ticket price, I'm going to have an income of $12,000. And we can see how this kind of comes all the way up and curves, and then it has a peak right here. And so that peak is going to be our maximum. That's saying that if we change the ticket price or increase it by $7, because that's positive, then we're going to have an income of $16,900. And we saw what that looks like here in the table. It's increasing, 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 and then it's decreasing, decreasing. And if you look carefully, you can see a pattern with your Y values. So we have the 16,900 at our maximum, and then on either side of that, we have the 16,800 here and here. Here and here, we have the 16,500, and then we have 16,000, and if I were to continue on with this table, we would see that pattern continue. So just to go over a couple of things that we have discovered. The more that we charge for a ticket, a ticket, it increases our income, but only up to a certain point. And that, again, was this point right here. So we can increase our ticket price by $7 up to $13 per ticket, and that will get us to our maximum income. Then the tickets become too expensive and our income starts to decrease. Um, from $13 a ticket to $14 a ticket, it decreases by $100. And then from $14 a ticket to $15 a ticket, it decreases by $300 and then by $500. Again, going back to our second difference, 
or the difference in our income as we increase the ticket price by one dollar each. And so for for each one dollar increase in the ticket price, the income changes. And even though it's positive, even though we're making more money, our income is increasing at a decreasing rate. So we're making less every single time. So even though we're making money, we're making less and less and less until we are going in the wrong direction. And we can see that I've added a column here, which represents the number of people attending the concert at a given ticket price. And we talked earlier about how we get these values here. So if we take our total income and we divide it by the cost per ticket, that's going to tell us how many people attended. So 12,000 divided by 6 gives us 2,000. If we look down here at this row, we have 16,000 divided by 10 gives us 1,600. So 1,600 people would be attending the concert if we charge $10 per person. And you can see that for every dollar that we increase the ticket price, 100 fewer people attend the concert. And so now we're going to look at um, where we would make no, no money. We'd have no income. And so this is our previous table. And I highlighted the original ticket price, which was a zero change. At 12, and we would have an income of $12,000, $7 ticket price, $1 change, $13,300. And so I recreated that over here. And we're actually going to work our way back up the table to find all of these values or how much money we would make um, if we were, instead of increasing the ticket price, if we were to decrease the ticket price. So here we're decreasing it by a dollar to five dollars, decreasing it by two dollars to four dollars and so on. And so we can use the same strategy that we used to find all of these values, but we're just going in reverse. We know that that second difference or the difference in the amount of income that we're going to have each time is going, if we were going down the table, would be decreasing by 200 each time. But we're going to go up the table, so we're actually going to start with this $1,300 difference, and we're going to add 200 to it. Um, just like if we were to look back here at the old table, if we started with 100, we would add 200 to get to 300, add 200 to get to 500, and so on. And so if we were to fill this in, it would look like this. And so we can see that if we take our 13,300 and we add 1,300, we or excuse me, we subtract the 1300, we get to 12,000. If we subtract the 1500, we get to 10,500. Subtract, we get here. Subtract, we get here. Just like here, if we, when we started with our 12,000, we added 1300 to get to the 1300. We added 1100 to get here. So because we're working back up our table, we're going to use the inverse operation. And when we do that, we eventually end up with an income of zero. We end up with an income of zero when I decrease the ticket price by $6, taking it from $6 down to zero. So when I have a ticket price of zero dollars or free, then I'm not going to make any money. And taking the table from our previous screen and putting it here, um, we can use this information to see what this looks like graphically. And we can see that we have our x-intercept here, and that shows up down here on our graph. That's saying if we decrease the ticket price by $6, we have zero income. Here's our y-intercept from one of the previous slides. If we don't change the ticket price at all, if we charge $6 a ticket, we're going to have an income of $12,000. If we increase by $7 per ticket to $13 a ticket, we'll have our maximum income of 16900 
and then it will continue back down until we get over here to our other x-intercept at 20, 0, which tells us that if we increase the ticket price by $20, we will have zero profit. That means the ticket price would then be $26 a piece, and apparently they feel like that would be too expensive for Maurice and the O's. This is an example of a quadratic function. Some of the features of this quadratic function, it has two x-intercepts, it has a y-intercept, it has a maximum value, and as we have seen in the last couple of lessons, um, one of the common features of quadratics is that common second difference that we were looking at. We will explore this more as we finish out Unit 7 and move into Unit 8.